Today we're going to talk more about the circulatory system, specifically the different blood vessels we have. First of all, we should determine a solid definition for what a blood vessel is in the first place. A blood vessel is a passage through which blood travels. The types we will be talking about today are the arteries, veins, and capillaries. The easiest way to tell the difference between these three types of blood vessels is to look at the walls of the vessel. Arteries are the thickest, veins are thin, but capillaries are extremely thin, only one cell wide. I think it's easiest to start off with the capillaries. These one cell thick walled transportation areas are found all over your body, especially in your tissues. The capillary's main function is to move things out and away from cells and to deliver to them. We have a ton of cells, so it makes sense that we have a ton of capillaries. Just like the small intestine, capillaries are only one cell thick and are semi-permeable. This allows certain things to go in and out of the capillaries. For example, blood cells are able to drop off oxygen and nutrients to cells and pick up carbon dioxide and waste products. I think of the capillaries as a UPS worker. They drop things off and pick things up and transport it. Now we need to talk about the arteries. In comparison to the capillaries, the arteries are much thicker in terms of diameter and in terms of their walls. Instead of being one cell thick, the arteries are made of elastic fibers and thick muscles that can move. It's important that these muscles and fibers are there because they can shrink or expand to change blood pressure. As you see in this picture, the normal artery looks like this, but when your artery needs to dilate or widen, it will look like this. It will dilate when your blood pressure is decreased. This is what it'll look like when your blood pressure increases. The more narrow the lumen, or otherwise known as the open part of the artery is, the higher the blood pressure is. More blood is traveling through a smaller hole, so the pressure increases due to its volume. The heart pumps the blood, causing it to have a higher pressure. Arteries have to be thick because they are the vessel that moves blood away from the heart and has to handle the increased pressure caused by the heart. The artery blood is spread out into the capillaries to deliver oxygen to cells. Now we need to talk about veins, which move towards the heart after leaving the capillaries. When the blood from the arteries drops off oxygen in the capillaries, it also picks up carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide and deoxygenated blood is transported in the veins to the heart which is then pumped into the lungs and back through the heart to be sent to the rest of the body once again. Because the blood hasn't been pumped in a while, the blood makes its way through the body and it's flowing at a much lower pressure. Since there's not as much pressure, the vein walls are a little bit thinner and the lumen or open area is larger. The veins are often going against gravity and don't have a high pressure to keep things moving, so valves are extremely helpful. Valves stop the blood from flowing backwards while still allowing blood to move forwards. In conclusion, the three types of blood vessels are veins, arteries, and capillaries. Capillaries are widespread and one cell thick and are an area of exchange for oxygen and carbon dioxide, as well as nutrients. The arteries carry blood from the heart to the rest of the body. The arteries have thick, adjustable walls to help with the pressure changes that need to happen. Finally, the veins are the blood vessels that return blood to the heart with carbon dioxide. The blood pressure is naturally lower because it hasn't been run through the heart recently, so the lumen is much wider and the wall is much thinner than the artery. Check out these sources for more information.